Hello and welcome to Sketch Together. My name is Pablo Stanley. This is part of a crash course on Framer, a tool for designing and prototyping projects. On this video, we're going to learn about events. Events are things that can happen to layers, often triggered by user interaction, like a button. With events, you can animate layers based on these interactions, from single taps and swipes to advanced multi-touch gestures. Amazing stuff. Let's get started. Events are actions that can happen to layers. With events, you can trigger animations, for example. Events can be activated by user interaction, like a tap or a scroll, or they can also be caused by animations, state switches, page changes, etc. Let's create a simple event with this example. I want to add an event to this button that triggers an animation on this rectangle. I already created a target here on the layers list, so I'm ready to code. I'm going to go here to the code, and then I'm going to say that button dot on. That is actually a really good way to remember how to add an event. It's by writing on, and then you're going to see all the different events that you can add. So I'm going to go with a very simple one, which is on tap. I'm going to select it here, and then I'm going to add a dash and a chevron. This is very important. If not, it will not work. And then I'm going to say that the box animates and I'm going to say that the scale is what changes. So I'm going to say that it goes all the way to 1.5. So right now, if I tap on this, this should animate. There you go. Another simple way to add an event is by just going here to the layers list, and then on the layer that we want to add an event to, just go here to this little icon, and then select add an event. And then here you're going to see the list of all the different events that you can add to your layer. Let's add a tap event. So there you go. It gave you a snippet of code that you can start using. Right now, I'm not going to be using this, so I can just delete it. So I'm going to do the same as before. I'm going to say that the box, it animates, and then I'm going to say that the scale changes to 1.5. Let's test our code. I tap on this, and then the box animates. Pretty cool. Sometimes, you don't want an event to be triggered by user interaction, but by something that happens on the screen, like when an animation starts or an animation ends. Let's add an event that listens to an animation and then triggers another one. On this example, I have a little square that is acting as a ball, and I want it to move all the way down here, and then it bounces back. I already created a target to it, so I can start coding. So the first thing that I want to do is add an animation for this ball to go all the way here. So I'm going to write ball, which is the name of my layer. And then I'm going to say that it animates. And I'm going to say that it animates the position on the Y. So I'm going to say that it goes all the way down to 400. Now I want to add an event that listens to this animation. And once the animation ends, then it starts another animation that brings the ball back over here. So I'm going to say, that ball on animation end. I'm going to add the dash and the chevron. And I'm going to say that once the animation ends, then the ball animates again. And it animates the Y position back to the position 200 pixels. See what happened there? Let's reload it. It ends and then it goes back. It ends, and then it goes back. Here, it doesn't need any user interaction. It's just listening to the animation, and then it starts another animation. On this example, I created two states for the ball, where the position on the Y is different. And then I created an event that listens to this animation, and then it just cycles through those states, creating a loop. Find the link on the description to download the files of this lesson.